into the dark caves of the geometer, inside the human mind. Whew, it's weird in here. Tangled webs of lines and shapes and numbers. It's a confusing, mysterious landscape. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to the landscape of geometry. It isn't really confusing and mysterious, you know. Geometers are like all mathematicians. Nobody understands them. At heart, they're really simple folks. People have been exploring this landscape of geometry for more than 3,000 years. Even back then, the great mathematicians, you know, the Egyptians, Babylonians, and Greeks, had a passion for making things simple. One of the most famous was Euclid. He wrote the first great work of geometry, called Elements, because he realized that geometry is basic, elementary. Call it what you want. Geometry is a haven for people who find the real world too complicated. This world, color and sound, noise and confusion, movement. The real world, far too jumbled. A real problem for the geometer Take color. It has so many shades and hues, it can make your head spin. Too much for the simple geometer. Throw out color! And movement? There's nothing so frustrating as something that won't stand still. Stop! Texture? Rough skin? Corduroy? Messy, messy. Out they go. And sound? Need I say more? Finally, things are simple enough for the geometer. A landscape of shapes, very simple shapes. That's geometry, the study of shapes and how they relate to each other in space. And even then, the only shapes truly simple enough for the geometer are the imaginary ones. Can you imagine a surface so thin it has no thickness? Or a line so thin it has no width, just length? Or how about a point so small that it has no size at all? Presenting, for your understanding, the true landscape of geometry. Too simple to see. Well, it's ridiculous, of course. Even geometers like to see what they're thinking about. So, equipped with visible points and lines, now you can explore geometry in two worlds. The invisible geometry in the mind and the rough geometry out there in the real world. You hear about computers designing things. Soap bars, cars, buildings. How does a computer design a building? Actually, we start off with an engineer's drawings. We may begin with a wall, and we tell the computer how to draw it. You mean the computer understands geometry? Mm, you could say so. I'll start off with the first point, and I'll add another point on the screen. Now, I'll tell the computer to treat these two points as the ends of a line. The computer will then identify all the points that lie between these two endpoints and fill them in. Oh, that's like geometry. Points are the building blocks. And when we think of a line, we think of it as a whole bunch of points strung between two endpoints. <laughs> right. Now, with more Thank lines, you. yeah, exactly the same. With more lines, we can close in a section of the screen. And we tell the computer that these lines are the boundaries of the surface. So you build a surface by filling it with lines? Right. Remember, those lines were in turn drawn with points. So that works either way. Then you can either think of the, the surface as an unlimited number of lines side by side, like stacked, or you can also think of it as the sum of all the points inside those boundary lines. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, it's really no more sophisticated than a drawing board one that uses geometry to imitate real life. Can you finish the building? Sure. I'll just add a few simple geometric shapes. told you so. There's that pesky geometry lurking under the surface of everything. Simple. Perfect. 
to just stand back and squint a bit. In real life, you can make good use of that underlying geometry. Geometry can help capture the real world and then transform it. Look at the pattern of windows on this building. Geometry can describe those patterns. That's what you want to do. See, once you can describe a pattern, you can make a copy. Grab a window shape and just copy it from window to window. Transform it from floor to floor. In geometry, figures that have exactly the same size and shape are called congruent. Exactly the same size and shape. Congruent patterns allow you to imitate and copy, but geometry allows you to do more than just transform exact copies from place to place. Geometry lets you scale things up and down, you know, transform a small shape into a large one. It lets you make the real world portable. You use it to collapse ideas and squash them flat onto a piece of paper or a TV screen. It explains how this becomes this. Maps and models, sketches and drawings, geometry. Geometry is more than just a convenience. It's a way of life. Fact is, we're all natural geometers. Watch. <laughs> Neat, isn't it? How quickly we can identify images. Obviously, somewhere in our brains, we have a great big catalog of patterns, shapes we've seen before. But when have you seen this particular object before? Never. And this one? And yet, you know that they're trucks. How do you know? Your brain not only stores patterns, but it's able to stretch those patterns to fit an unknown object and let you identify it. You never saw that truck, but you know it's a truck. Shape and pattern play an important part in how your brain learns. You learn the alphabet, simple geometric figures. After memorizing the standard S, you can recognize variations in its shape. Because we have this ability, our minds are far more advanced than computers. 
It's easy to give machines vision. But we also want them to say to themselves, aha, a W. Or, oops, a defective gizmo. Or, oh, an enemy plane. Why do certain patterns catch our fancy more than others? They've got balance and repetition that somehow seems to tickle the brain in the right way. That balance and repetition is called symmetry. And symmetry can be described by geometry. These patterns don't move, and yet there is a kind of movement that ties them together. Watch. A flip. A slide. A turn. Another turn. Slide. And another flip. And one part matches another. Artists and craftsmen love symmetry. Not just because symmetry is pretty, but because nature is a geometer, too. Because things that aren't balanced tend to fall down. Geometry is always there. Sometimes it's just a little hard to see. Do you think deep down among the molecules and atoms there's a perfect geometry made up of pure points, pure lines, and pure surfaces? Or does geometry only exist in your mind? In lots of ways, geometry is a puzzle, a game. You fill empty space with points that are little bits of nothing. And then, out of emptiness, out of nothing, explain the world around you. <laughs>